I hope you had a wonderful week. Today's countdown timer was chill, as a couple of you noted. Uh, and that's the beauty of Epidemic Sound, right? You can get like whatever it is that you want. Um, chill, super high energy. Uh, you guys know I love the high energy ones, but today I was feeling kind of chill. So uh, I went for the chill. So <laughs> how many times am I going to say chill? <laughs> Uh, so you can get that uh, 30 day free trial for your own epidemic sound right here uh, at livestreamingpros.com slash music if you want to discover new music for you and your streams or videos. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about content ideas. Um, I know, how many of you, can we do a poll? Callie, can we do a, oh, aw, can we do a poll on all the channels? at least the two YouTube channels that we've got going on. I don't know if Ecamm has that, um, but we do, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, maybe we need a poll about this. <laughs> do we need country music in that <laughs> in that them care countdown? I don't know, you guys vote. But what I was gonna say is we should do a poll about um, whether you struggle to come up with content ideas for your videos and your live streams. Uh, I think that I know I hear from you a lot that you do. Uh, I do have a 10 ideas that I'm gonna go through with you today to kind of keep it short, but right here at livestreampros.com slash video ideas, We've got you covered 31 different ideas. And as we add to that list over time, you'll also get those. Um, one thing I did not put in this PDF, I realized during the countdown timer, I forgot to add dancing uh, into the content ideas. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Do we need to add? <laughs> do we need to add that? But 31 different ideas for you. That way you have a variety of different topics to choose from. Um, I never think of what I will stream. I just stream record. Good. You're just, you're, you're out there. You're doing it. That's fantastic. I love it. Yay. You can poll too. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so we're going to see what the poll results are of that. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, we're going to talk about content ideas. I just wanted to hang out with you and chill with you. I think that means that Callie earns a prize or something. <laughs> Let's add dancing right? We've got to add dancing to the content ideas. <laughs> um, when I struggle with content ideas, I do tips and tricks. Nice. That is actually one of the uh, ideas in this is tips and tricks, but I added a, sec a third to that uh, topic. Uh, so go look for that. Um, and in there, you will you will find a variety of like things that are normal that you see every day in this video too. Uh, but also you'll find some things that you probably haven't even thought about. So yes, all right, stream of consciousness. Oh, that should be. Um, I went for a bit of a different version of that, but... I think that that could actually be a different one. Uh, let's write that down. Let's write that down. Okay. <laughs> Tips and tricks is always a good one. Uh, I farm the comments from videos for video ideas. We'll talk about that in today's video. All right. So are you guys, well, bring it on, Bluegrass. Uh, I love, love, love that you have uh, 200 different ideas for your content. Um, by the way, I know you're new around here, so thank you so much for being here. I would love for you to chime in with maybe two or three of your favorites. Go ahead and put that in the comments. Um, I would love to hear kind of what you guys work off of as well. All right, then let's Get this party started after my nose itches. Stop itching. <laughs> Do you struggle with creating content, coming up with ideas? Maybe sometimes you're like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I've got this video or this live stream to do, and I'm blank. If you ever have felt like that, don't you worry. I've got you covered. Today, I'm going to give you 10 different video ideas for your recorded videos or your live streams that you can use and create more engaging content that your audience is going to love. So I've also got 
31 different video ideas, probably more by the time you download this, uh, but we've got lots of ideas right here at livestreamingpros.com slash video ideas. I don't have time to cover them all in this short video, but we will get you, get you covered with that free PDF um, cheat sheet so that you can just take a look at that before you go live or before you record a video and create or get some creative uh, juices flowing. So are you ready to dig in? Let's do it. If you're new around here, please do type new in the comments. I would love, love, love to meet you. If you are new, then you don't know me. Hi, I'm Luria Petrucci from Live Streaming Pros, and this show is Go Live Now in partnership with my favorite streaming software for the Mac, Ecamm Live. So let's dig into ideas because once you have Ecamm installed, and by the way, don't forget, they have a they have a sale going on, a summer sale. So click the link in the description for information about that if you're a new customer to Ecamm. Okay, new subbed on to Ecamm on Friday. Fantastic. I love, love, love to see new people in here and in the community and participating so rapidly. I love you guys. Okay, so let's talk about ideas. Now, here's the thing. When you're thinking about content ideas for your videos or your live streams, you need to remember that you want to create engagement. A lot of different people will create the same kind of topic format over and over and over, and that's great. You can also work these different um, ideas into your content flow so that people feel a little bit more engaged, they're getting some variety, and you're testing the waters to see what your audience will react to. You need to understand your audience in general in order for these ideas to work. And testing and experimentation is often the key to understanding them, right? So let's go through these different ideas. And don't forget, you can download the free PDF that has lots more ideas as well. So. Number one, do's and don'ts. Your audience is most likely trying to get past a hurdle or some kind of struggle. So with do's and don'ts, you're helping them actually get further faster. You're helping them accomplish better things quicker than they would on their own. And so do's and don'ts really help break it down if you want to accomplish X, Y, Z, do this, do not do that, right? Those are things that you can break down very quickly, very easily, use visuals on screen to break down the do's and don'ts, and it'll help your audience and give them massive, massive value. Number two, answering FAQs or viewer comments. Uh, Doc Rock actually said before we got started, that he, you know, goes through his comment streams in order to come up with topic ideas. And this is one of the best ways that you can create valuable content that you know your audience wants to hear. It doesn't have to come from your brain. It comes from your audience's questions. And that is a beautiful way to create content. They're already asking you questions. So take that comment turn it into a piece or a topic, um, but you can also flat out do FAQs, top 10 uh, questions that you get asked. You can screenshot viewer comments from a previous video and, and share that. That is a really great way to get engagement, by the way. If Doc Rock had commented and I screenshotted something, I could display that right there on screen, making him feel part of the community, like I care about him because I do, right? And that they feel special by being called out. So you can do a lot of that great things. Now, pro tip, this is very, very, very important. Are you listening? very important. Do not, <laughs> do not go live with a live Q and A if you don't have audience engagement just yet. If you have very low viewership or lack of engagement, um, don't go live and just do an open Q and A. That's the, one of the most uh, uncomfortable things that you can do for yourself because they necessarily won't be asking questions, but you can prepare a Q&A 
by doing the FAQ style, where you come up with prepared lists of questions that people are already asking you. So you can do that, just don't leave it open and not have anything prepared. Pro tip for you. <laughs> All right, number three, tutorials are how-to series. Tutorials, uh, how-tos are some of the most popular content online because people are searching for that. And that is a fantastic way to get people to pay attention to you, to subscribe to you, to find you. This content is highly, highly discoverable and it can be a fantastic way to grow your audience. So how-tos, tutorials, you can do this a number of different ways. It can be about hardware, software, apps, um, anything, uh, product that you might have, physical product. It could be about anything that you have and you can use an over the shoulder shot so that you can have that demo uh, if it's a physical product or you could do like a PIP screen like this if it's a software or app demo, right? Or tutorial. So you could do a lot with that content um, and you can even spice it up and uh, get very interesting. Why did it go there? That was weird. Um, oh, because I hit, I get it. Okay. Whoops. Uh, all right, let's move on. Product comparisons, number four. Now, when you're your audience is trying to decide on a product, oftentimes comparing two or three different products can really help you um, or help them make a buying decision. And guess what? If you have um, a, an affiliate link for those products, that can help you generate revenue, right? It's a win, win, win. A win for the products, a win for the viewer and a win for you because you're also making money. But it also is very highly discoverable content as well. So you can do product comparisons, break down the pros and the cons for each different product. And again, this could be any number of different types of products or services. All right, next one is reaction videos. Oh my gosh, this is like definitely a popular thing to do at the moment. I've been, um, uh, I've been wanting to do them for quite a while and I will dig into those uh, very soon. But reaction videos is where you're reacting to somebody else's content or video or something. And you can do this, a lot of people take a negative approach, but you can do this in a very positive way that helps your audience um, learn right? You could take an educational approach to this so that you're not just slamming people because we don't want to do that, but we do want to, um, you know, make it entertaining. We want to help people and educate at the same time. Number six, interviews. Oh, such a good way to grow your audience. If you want to grow quickly, doing interviews can be a great way to do this because you're bringing somebody on uh, to your stream or to your video and they have, they're an expert or a, a thought leader in um, their space or your space, right? It's adding value with a different perspective to your viewers, but if you're collaborating and somebody is going to share your link to their audience and you, you can't guarantee it, but you can ask for it. If they share it to their audience, then guess what? Um, they're going to be able to, uh, you're going to be able to draw an audience from their audience and hopefully get a few subscribers out of that. Do that enough and it snowballs so that your audience growth soars. Uh, number seven, news about trending topics. All right. If you're not paying attention, now is the time to listen up. This is huge. Most people forget to do this. I did see somebody uh, during the countdown say that they actually do this and I love it. When you tap into news, industry news, or whatever news your audience cares about, uh, trending topics in your industry, that is when you can really set your name in stone. Um, you can gather a new audience because people are looking for content about that topic. Uh, you can create yourself or 
set yourself as a thought leader in that space. Don't be afraid here to offer your opinion. A lot of people are afraid in this particular scenario to offer their opinion um, because they don't want to make waves or rock the boat, but guess what? This is actually a perfect time to do so. You create a stick or a bail mentality with your audience, and you also can do it in a very, um, you know, in a, in a very easy way that will allow people to open up that conversation, right? I always state, like, this is my opinion, but I want to hear your opinion. You can invite conversation and engagement with your audience doing this and that will grow your audience. So this is a very, very effective piece of content. Do not forget about this. If you know that something's going on, jump to this, put out other videos, like push out other videos. This always takes priority in the moment. That was a weak snap. <laughs> Number eight, what's in my bag or backpack um, or your studio or whatever. Um, this is tapping into the voyeurism or into the behind the scenes kind of content. Um, but what's in your bag or backpack um, or purse or whatever um, can actually be a really cool way to get audience engagement. People love this stuff uh, and it doesn't matter what kind of content you create. People like to see that more vo like that more behind the scenes type of thing because they're understanding more about you. They're getting tips for maybe what they should put in their own bags, right? Things like that. So you can adjust this topic as necessary for the topic or the content that you create, but that type of thing will really, really be beneficial to getting um, people to pay attention and to engage and to uh, ask questions, things like that. All right, next one is cheap versus expensive product. Now, unlike the product comparison that I shared earlier, cheap versus expensive takes a bit of a different approach to this, where it is very, um, like drastic levels, right? With product comparisons, you might have very similar services, similar costs, um, but cheap versus perspective versus expensive is very different, um, you know, price points. So you're showing them each option on the end of the each end of the spectrum. And so that can really help people make a buying decision. And you can talk about whether it's worth spending that extra money on the more expensive product. So again, this is a perfect opportunity for affiliate revenue as well. And finally, but not least, I've got I've got more ideas for you. So don't go away. I'll show you how to get that. Listicles, top 10 ideas. <laughs> top 10 ways to do something, uh, X number of, you know, um, uh, steps that you need. These are all called listicles where you're listing out a variety of different types of content. So you're seeing this type in action where you can put that on screen. You could even maybe put a sidebar with some of the graphics that we sell in our live streaming pros store, um, where you could break out all of the information as well if you wanted to do that. So listicles, uh, but this is not it. If you want 31 ideas um, to add to your videos and to your live streams, go to livestreamingpros.com slash video ideas and you'll see this page and then you'll be able to download um, the PDF that is completely free, um, but I want you to be able to have a resource at your disposal that gives you this content ideas to just bounce off of, right? If you are worried about whatever say, or if you ever get stru uh, stuck in your content cr uh, production process, that was hard to say, um, then I would love, love, love for you to download this so that you can just use it as a cheat sheet, experiment, try new things. And if you want to learn more about audience growth strategies in general, go ahead and click this video to learn more and to dive deeper. And if you're joining us on the live Q and A's, you get to join for a Q and A. So I'll see you in the next live stream and in that video. All right, you guys, that, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what? No, not doc. Shit. Shit. <laughs> um, I know that we already had some questions um, 
submitted. If you do have questions, uh, go ahead and uh, add a queue in front of your question. If those of you who are new, uh, just put a queue in front of your question. That way it gets into my queue so that I don't miss your questions. There are lots of comments coming. Um, let's see, we've got uh, this. Uh, somebody asked, what was the link uh, to the rest of the document? Uh, you can just go to livestreampros.com slash video ideas right there, and you'll be able to download that for completely free and get going. Um, so what was your favorite video idea? I would love for you to chime in with that um, for less how to stream for less, how to game for less, how to make mac and cheese for less. Ooh, now you got me thinking. <laughs> um, what's in my fridge? <laughs> you can totally do that. <laughs> uh, you could do any version of that that fits with your content and your audience. Um, no, 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 not cheap. <laughs> cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. We had a question from French press. Uh, can a YouTube video be part of multiple playlists? Like a single video be part of two different playlists? Yes and no. Haha. <laughs> Don't you love it when I give you an answer like that? Yes, it can be. Um, but there are certain types of playlists and I'm blanking on the name at the moment. There's a it's a playlist, Renee help me out or somebody else help me out. Um, the uh, There's a certain type of playlist that doesn't allow you to have that video in multiple playlists. But other than that, if you don't do that, then you can do that. Then you can have them in both. New listicle, uh, wait, <laughs> top five topics to distract Luria. I'll start with donuts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, that's an easy one. I can get distracted easily. <laughs> uh, what do you do when you have too many ideas? How do you prioritize? That's a great question, Renee. Um, one, I don't think you need help with, but <laughs> that's a great question. Um, so when you have too many ideas, then prioritizing that comes down to a couple of different things. One, the first question that I would ask is, is this going to be in the now, here and now, right? Trending topics, news. If it's if it's possible that it might be hitting um, an interest in the moment, then that would take priority. If all of the ideas don't fit that category, then you would be looking at, um, depending on your time, if you have a lot of time to spare to create that or a short amount of time to create that, then where what idea is going to take less time or more time so that you can kind of prioritize based on your time limit or capabilities. Uh, and then the other one would be what matches um, the best possible search results, right? So if you're using TubeBuddy or things like that, uh, what seems like it will perform the best? Uh, and obviously we don't always get that right. Uh, nobody does, but <laughs> that, um, those are three questions that I would tend to ask. Like, is there, is there a reason for prioritizing something because it's going to perform better? Uh, you, your audience has just been begging you for it. That's a, actually a fourth question I would ask. Is your audience just like begging you for that content then get it out the door to them? Trigger word, mac and cheese. Definitely a trigger word around here. <laughs> Um, email support, it should be, I tested it this morning, it should be working. Um, but, uh, if you guys don't get that, then let support know, support at livestreamingpros.com and, uh, we will get that to you. Okay. Wait, I had a whole another question. Um, how did you get through all, I, all 10 ideas? Do you have a teleprompter or a really good memory? Wait, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> um, we had, I had them right here. I had them on screen for you and me. <laughs> That's uh, all I needed. Um, and I, in terms of just the things that I said on each idea, that was just me knowing what I wanted to share in that moment. That's That comes from prep. That comes from just years of knowledge, 16, 15 years of doing this. I don't know why I went 16. Um, <laughs> what if your ideas are a bit stagnant? Um, 
Well, who says they're stagnant, first of all? <laughs> um, that isn't um, necessarily true. If it's coming from your own brain, I would challenge you on that. I don't believe that most of the things that we think are stagnant are because hopefully you're reaching a new audience of people who I've talked about content ideas so many times, so many times uh, over the years. It's not stagnant to anybody who's, you know, new. It's not stagnant to somebody like Renee who has been creating content himself for so, for so many years. Um, it's always about the, the new way of hearing it or another idea that you might not have picked up on before as a viewer, right? So I would challenge you on that. And if you really do feel like, no, you need some new um, ideas, then go into quiet mode, brainstorm some stuff, uh, and also ask your audience. Get them involved. Uh, series playlists, that's the, that's the type of playlist that does not allow you to have multiple video or videos and multiple playlists. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that was. All right. Um, have you ever had an idea block for a video in your 15 years of doing video? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We all, we all go through that. Um, of like, it's not, it's not often, but it happens like, and that usually and I will say this is probably the truth for everybody. It's usually because I'm just not in the mood, <laughs> right? To create something out of my head. Um, I, it's a block it, and that's all it is, right? And so if you ever have that, then it's because you're in a bad mood or because you just aren't in that zone um, to kind of pull from the mass amounts of knowledge and ideas that live in your brain and that are just waiting to come out. Uh, that exists for all of us. So uh, I don't, I, I don't think that it's, it's, it's very easy when I hit that block for me to take a step back and just be like, okay, like let's think differently around about this and then change that up. Okay. Okay. Um, it should have been a link in the email. Okay, I'm gonna have to check on that. You guys, go ahead and download it. If you don't get it uh, right after this show, I will fix whatever's gone wrong and uh, make sure that you guys have, I'll send out another email with, with the link if that's not going out. Um, Ma, VTubers are becoming popular. Uh, I want to introduce a 3D avatar to our community. Is it too much that I'm trying to come up with a background story that consists of multiple parts? Um, it depends. <laughs> um, this stuff happens over time. I would say that oftentimes putting so much effort into creating this whole big thing can often be more of a procrastination method, or it can, uh, be a little bit of a waste of time just because the, when you think about how I talk about audience triggers, your audience is going to tell you what they like, right? And so when you're releasing, you know, information about a backstory or something like that, you can kind of slowly do it over time and your audience being involved in that process of liking, not liking, things like that then that's going to actually create a more deeper connection with your audience. Hopefully that makes sense. Yay! <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Interesting. I usually judge my weekly how-to's ingredient science videos. It sounds like a fascinating channel. Uh, <laughs> based on current trends and supporter questions. So you do a how to ingredient science video. That sounds interesting. Um, and then you're basing it on trends. Sounds like you've got kind of a magical formula there, uh, bluegrass. I love that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Callie is not here. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yay. Tuan, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and, uh, taking the action on the advice that we give you.
Do you use Next Overlay Stream Deck Key or just switch them with your mouse? Great question. Yes, I am actually. This is my new, I don't know if you noticed, but we have new graphics, right? Uh, and you can get all. You can get graphics right here at livestreampros.com slash store. Uh, but this is my new Stream Deck uh, profile that I've just barely gotten started uh, setting up just for today's live stream. Um, and yeah, I'm using the next scene, previous scene right there. Oh, the poll is complete. I'm a bad drummer. Uh, do you struggle to come up with content ideas for your videos and live streams? Yes, 71%. No, 28%. Wow. Okay. So I love the people who are, who are saying, who are just honest and just like, yeah, I do. Because I think that's true of everybody at different times, right? Yes. Limiting belief right there. <laughs> Imagine the guys on iPhone 4 who avoided talking about iPhones because they thought the topic was stagnant. Um, you can get creative with ideas and different ways of, of talking about the same topic. I have, like I said, I've talked about the same topics over and over and over and over, and it never ceases to amaze how interested the audience is. Ow. <laughs> Just hit my funny bone. It can be all in the delivery and the insight. Absolutely. When you start, you don't think you have enough content to write one blog post uh, a day. Quickly got to 10 plus. Content is always there. You just have to be passionate and relentless. Yes, I love that. Hello, Brian. Nice to see you. Um, oh, this is a great one actually as well. YouTube always shows you what videos your audience is watching on other channels. Uh, it can be a great resource for you to do the, your version of those types of videos. Love that tip. Thank you. Do one thing I'm working to get better at is staying in flow state, removing distractions. If you can do that, if you can remove um, distractions, your whole world changes. Do not disturb is my favorite piece of tech ever, <laughs> favorite functionality of tech ever to have existed. Um, because when I need to concentrate, going into do not disturb and just removing all possibilities of distraction really helps unlock those content ideas, but also helps you be more productive in every single way. Kevin says, I love when my audience tells me what they hate about my content. That way I can tweak them to be less annoying or not. Kevin, I can't imagine anyone saying they hate it, hate your content. Come on now. <laughs> you guys, don't forget, um, Ecamm has a brand or a uh, special for new customers, 30% off your first uh, payment. So if you get the annual plan, you're getting a really sweet deal. Uh, Livestreamingpros.com slash Ecamm will get you the link and also a free tutorial series. So if you haven't dived, dove in, dove in, d dived, I never, I never know um, what that right at one is. But if you haven't uh, started with Ecamm and you're on a Mac, then that is a perfect summer special to take advantage of. Um, thank you so much. I think we, uh, I don't have my super chat on, sorry. Uh, thank you so much, Marcus, for the super sticker. I appreciate you so much. Let's see. Wait, I'm seeing, I'm scrolling down to see what I missed here. Here's a distraction, yay! <laughs> Distractions are okay <laughs> while live, I guess. Let's see, any, Anthony says, any legal implications with these ideas that we should watch out for? As long as you're not stealing people's content, <laughs> ideas cannot be copyrighted or can't be like uh, trademarked or anything like that, right? Ideas are ideas. The actual content that you create is, is different, right? So if you're stealing somebody's content, then that's a problem, but you're not doing that. So don't worry about it. Just don't, you know, there's difference between legal and then also probably getting way too close to the, you know, like stealing somebody's um, 
I, uh, opinion, right, without giving credit, things like that. So if Renee says something on his video and then I turn around and give that same statement of an opinion or something like that where I don't give them credit, that that would be not necessarily illegal but immoral, right? So you just got to make sure that you're giving credit where credit is due and um, not stealing content outright, so... What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what y'all are doing in chat right now. I don't know what y'all are doing. Let's see. Lance says, what would be a way to get more traction with interviews with comic book writers that are being live streamed? So far, they're not getting views. It would be live streamed so far. That the interviews are also typically around an hour. So a couple of ideas here. So, um, you know, promoting in advance is one. Uh, doesn't matter who they are, right? Are the comic book writers, are they uh, popular comics uh, or are they kind of under the radar ones? Depending on which one that is, then taking a bit of a different approach in your um, promotions can really help you. So let's say they're under the radar kind of writers and um, you could compare without comparing you, but you could like relate their type of comment to something that's popular to get people's interest, right? Tapping into the news or in, uh, interested topics. Um, but also you can uh, just make sure that you're promoting ahead of time, even if they are popular people, then you're probably not doing a good enough job letting people know. Another thing is getting them, asking them to promote as well, giving them the link ahead of time, um, encouraging them to share it with their audience, uh, then you can definitely, you know, get more traction if they're showing it to their audience as well, if they have an audience. Um, getting connected with other uh, like-minded communities uh, that you can, you know, create an environment where people are interested in the topic, right? Uh, you could say things like on this, uh, in, a, in a group maybe, right? Uh, you could share a tip uh, from something that the comic book writer said uh, and kind of draw attention to the fact that you, that you had this person on your show without promoting directly to it, right? But you could add value to the community um, and also kind of make a name for yourself. That's how you, over time, build up that reputation and viewership. And then finally, repurposing the content. Your videos are an hour long, which a lot of people will watch. We have a lot of people, like 91 people right now watching um, an hour long content piece of content. <laughs> um, and, you know, people come and go, right? But you're also missing out on people who are only going to watch three to five minutes. So repurposing that live stream, taking a clip of something that that writer said uh, would be a great way to clip that out, post that on social, post that as its own video, linking back to your interview. And then over time, People are going to be more and more interested in coming to that live stream. You've got to create with whatever content you create. You've got to create a sense of FOMO, fear of missing out. Otherwise, they're not going to prioritize your live stream. Okay. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, also building that following over time with proper tagging. Tagging seems to be in most overlooked, but most important parts of the content. Yeah. Um, I think on a recent video, uh, I didn't, um, I didn't, uh, have a part in this, so I may get it wrong, but I believe, um, on one of our videos recently, we forgot to add tags. And then as soon as the, like, it wasn't performing very well, as soon as we added tags, then we got uh, better performance, right? So those are things that you do need to pay attention to. So thank you for, for mentioning that. Rising Faith says, is it a good idea to have more than one YouTube channel? Not until your one channel is performing really well. It is incredibly difficult to focus 
audience growth and creating great content on two totally different uh, channels. So no, it would be highly unrecommended, not recommended. Is unrecommended a word? <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it was not recommended. If to have two different channels, even if there's two totally different topics, um, until you get used to the process of creating content consistently and growing your audience, uh, once you've got one performing really well, doing really well, it's easy. I mean, it's never easy, but you know what I mean? Like it's, you've got a pattern going. Um, then you can consider opening up a second channel, but it is a, a time suck. Remember that. So it could be very, very detrimental because when you're focused on multiple things, then you're less focused on one thing, which sounds just obvious, but it's not to a lot of people. And so when you're distracted with trying to do too much, then nothing gets traction at all. Well, thank you, Sammy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Let's see. What, <laughs> what if you want an alternate account for fish stimulation? Simulation streaming. That's, you know, is your choice. <laughs> um, I mean, fish simulations, streaming, always recommended, obviously. <laughs> but it's uh, unless you're hungry, because then it makes you want sushi. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Uh, welcome to the channel. How important are thumbnails? Uh, depends on which platform we're talking. If we're talking YouTube, I'm assuming you are since you're watching on YouTube, thumbnails are vitally important to your audience growth, to people actually clicking your videos. You need to create that intrigue and that um, attention. So the more effort you put into thumbnails, the more results you're going to have. Um, it's incredibly rare that you're able to grow a YouTube channel successfully without putting some um, effort into th to good thumbnails. <laughs> I accidentally did. I was hoping nobody, nobody noticed that. <laughs> uh, it came out wrong. I said it right. <laughs> I love the breakdown series on YouTube where they get real experts that break down their actors, counterpart characters, and how it's really done. A great channel. Another is Dr. Mike. Yeah, Dr. Mike. Love Dr. Mike. Um, yeah, so lots of, I mean, you you can also get ideas, guys, by watching other people's content. This is a fan. I, hey, can we put that one on the list too? Um, you can get so many ideas by just being a viewer yourself. So that is something to pay very close attention to. Okay. <laughs> Oh, if he was here, <laughs> then um, maybe we could go there. But should I worry about messing up my channel early by going in too many different directions? Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, yes, you should. So I talked about this uh, in, I think, on Friday's stream, but maybe you weren't here. Oh, this gold right here. Gold advice right here. <laughs> um, so too many directions Two, yes, you can hurt because especially on, you're coming in from Facebook. So maybe you're talking about Facebook streaming, but it doesn't matter when you're offering people a value proposition, right? Um, the, what your channel is about, then people are expecting that. And if you're not giving them that, then they're not going to pay attention to the content even when it is about what they subscribed for. So you need to be very careful about not going in too many different directions. The way that you can do this, if, you have, if you're a multi-passionate uh, person, then you choose your niche topic, you choose the topic that you're going to con uh, create content about, and then you weave in other interests, hobbies into your examples of how, of do's and don'ts, right? Mistakes made, things like that. You can weave in your other hobbies, your other interests, your other passions into your stories that you tell your audience, 
into, like I said, examples, um, into your content in general, but your overarching theme, the content itself is about a single topic. That way you're finding the right audience who are going to love everything you do. If I started doing fish simulation content here on live streaming pros, you guys would be like, what the blank? <laughs> like, why am I watching fish simulation? Like what? Right. That would be so weird for you guys to watch because you're expecting live streaming content. You're expecting this kind of content. So, um, it is very, very important that you weave content in or weave interests in versus, uh, just doing this and doing that and doing that. So <laughs> this is not the place for fist simulations. It is not, I don't know why we're talking about it. <laughs> We would expect to and enjoy the fish. Oh, would you? <laughs> I don't think so. I didn't. I didn't do it, Daniel. I didn't. I, I was very careful with how I said that. Nika says, "Great suggestions. Weave in other interests, but stick to one main topic." Yes. Let's see. Oh, I missed a question. <laughs> Not a result in doing the fish. Are you guys ruining my whole point that you would watch? Like, are you saying that you would watch that? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, th this whole, this is an inside joke that comes from Callie's live streams. Uh, Callie is a uh, live streaming pros community, um, community care hero, AKA community manager. Uh, so much more in the business, but her streams, she does fish simulations. And so it's just become a, a thing. Um, <laughs> no, not on this channel. You can go watch Callie eat fish or do whatever it is. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, <laughs> we usually talk bacon and donuts and today we're talking finish. Uh, you know what, you know, these things uh, uh, change and adjust. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, but that's the other thing, right? This is a very good point that the magical Mr. Paul Dixon made, makes is that if you are going to do something that's irregular for your topic, you can always do that as member of content, right? That can, I mean, if it depends, right? So like our YouTube membership, um, people would love that content, right? If um, I tried to learn how to do a fish simulator game, or I'm not like afraid to say that word now. Um, or if, um, you know, I was to do, you know, paddle boarding or something like that, like completely random, completely off topic. That stuff is great for like our YouTube members because that's just more human content that they can relate to, we can hang out with. Um, I wouldn't tend to do that on my streamer accelerator membership, which is a core membership for us that people pay good money for to get additional training, right? To get like, um, high touch coaching from me. Right. So like that's, that probably wouldn't go well there. Right. So you just gotta like think through it. What's appropriate? What do people want? Although I'm going to guess because a lot of these people are in streamer accelerator, they'd be like, I'd be totally fine with that. <sighs> yes. Coming, I'm coming to Hawaii. <laughs> I paddleboarded in Hawaii once. So amazing. I loved that experience, even though I was on my knees the entire time because <laughs> the waves, I was looking out at the ocean. I was like, that's going to be easy water to paddleboard in. Then I got out there and I was like, oh. <laughs> it was, it was uh, intense. I will say that. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. I'm missing questions. But this is how you do it, guys, right? So we're the main topic. And then occasionally I'll throw in a story about paddleboarding in Hawaii, right? So like you can do that stuff. It's, it's sticky because people are paying attention for the content but they kind of stick around and they come back for that personal connection. So when I tell you a story based on somebody that doc says in the comments or based on an example that I want to provide, when I tell you a story of my own paddleboarding experiences or whatever that is, it creates a deeper connection with the audience. That's what I mean by weaving content in, right? 
<laughs> oh, geez. Let's see. Do you need permission? Patrick wanted to ask uh, to use a clip from somebody else's YouTube video. Uh, here's what Apple expert uh, extraordinaire Rene Ricci said about the M1X. Um, is, there's such thing as fair use. I think he answered you already in the comments, um, but I'll just quickly say like, there's such a thing as fair use, but I... I always, as, as long as I can, uh, get permission. Um, yeah, I try for sure. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Seriously cracking me up. How valuable do you find YouTube's other videos your audience is watching for content ideas? Too repetitive or sometimes valuable? Renee wants to know. I plead the fit. No, I actually do want do look at that occasionally, but I don't look at it as much as I should and as much as y'all should. I'm guessing you look at it way more than I do, Renee. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can't answer that because I don't look at it enough, um, but we will start to change that because I th the, the times I have looked at it, I find it very valuable because you're like, oh, okay, well, this same person is interested in. Once you know, I think that could lead you astray if you don't know your audience well, though, right? Because, I mean, let's face it, I also, you know, I don't I try not to do this on the same channel, but like on my personal channel, I'll watch, you know, a music video or something like that of, a, of an artist that I'm interested in. So that's not going to tell you much about what content to create, right? Um, but you do start to understand your audience a little bit more, right? If you see a trend that a lot of people in your audience are watching, um, Simmel, I'm just going to pull out one of my favorite artists, um, then you're able to understand that about your audience and say like, oh, okay, well, um, maybe you could bring Simmel up in a video or as an example, or just to create connection, right? So you could use it from that perspective, but you wouldn't want to create music videos just because your audience is watching music videos. So in, if you understand your audience and the differences of what to do with that information, then that could be uh, really good. Wait, what did Paul say? <laughs> Paul, oh, <laughs> this might not be the best place to ask this question, but how do you use different platforms effectively? Can I have a fun community channel with fish simulations on Facebook and camera content on YouTube? Again, that goes back to building two channels ineffectively, right? You can either build one channel on fist simulations or one channel on camera content and be effective until you have it up and running and it's running smoothly. Then you could open up and have another channel if your audience is interested in that. But trying to build two channels on two completely different topics is going to harm you because you're not able to concentrate on all of the things that you need to do in order to grow that channel. It takes a lot of time to do it effectively. So uh, be wary of that. If you're gonna use the same different platforms for the same type of content, that can be done very effectively uh, through a number of, of ways. Um, and we do talk about that in the content workshop that, um, that's coming up very soon. Um, and I'll let you know the, about that in, if you're on our email list and, and on the live streams as well. But yeah, that's um, like build, using two different platforms to build the same content is one thing. But what you're talking about, I would not recommend unless you're ready for that. <laughs> Oh my God. Oh, oh, I like to think it's a great picture. So I won't burst your bubble. Okay. We'll just, I'll just go. <laughs> I'll just move on. <laughs> when we were advertising on YouTube, we find a lot of action on a private pilot channel, but that probably wasn't a reliable trend. Interesting. That's fascinating. I did not know that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> my list is, that makes sense, right? That, that makes total sense in terms of the content your uh, audience is, is watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> none of the above for lunch for me, but my favorite food, sushi. I mean, 
sushi and mac and cheese. <laughs> I think there's a tie there. But I could eat sushi like every day. Oh, I love sushi so much. <laughs> uh, let's see if I'm missing any questions. I have the same content in two channels in two different languages. It was an audience demand. It's interesting. Uh, I'd be curious how that second one is going. I know that you've uh, seen a lot of success in, in your stream or in your channel, uh, Kamal, but um, yeah, I'd be very curious about that. I've, for years, I, I've had people asking me to do like Spanish versions of my videos and I just always declined because it just seemed too complicated. I mean, I don't speak Spanish, so it would have to be, you know, a different way to, to do that. So <laughs> sushi mac and cheese for lunch. That sounds disgusting, actually. Two favorites, but not together. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, but uh, fish outside of mac and cheese, fish would definitely be my favorite type of food because like, even if it's not sushi, like salmon, Tuna, ahi tuna, like to die for. Okay, so go here, livestreampros.com slash video ideas. Um, if you want to figure out how to wrap your favorite food into your content, um, you can go right here to livestreampros.com slash uh, video ideas. You'll get that. And um, if, yeah, if you had any problems with that, I will be sending out another email uh, shortly with all of that uh, with the, the download link uh, as well. Okay. I know everybody's going to eat sushi now. <laughs> How do you not know I like fish? How is that even possible? No, 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 no. Not rolls. Like I'm not a roll fan. I'm like a nigiri and sashimi fan. That's the way to go when it comes to sushi, unless it's a dragon roll. I do like dragon rolls, but I don't opt for dragon rolls. I opt for like the the good stuff <laughs> where you get more meat or more, you know, sushi in it, right? Not just a whole bunch of filler. <laughs> uh, I need a DoorDash link now. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to go eat sushi. So, so says Ecamm Live. Don't forget to take advantage of their summer sale if you're not an Ecamm user just yet. 30% uh, off your first payment. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Great questions. I hope that this has been super, super helpful for you. And uh, this is the link for you if you haven't downloaded that. And I will see you on Friday right here on the live streaming pros channels. And of course, Ecamm has all kinds of content ready to um, help you throughout the week as well. So. I don't have it. Oh, no, I didn't program my dance out button. We'll just have to do this. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I totally, I totally spaced on that. I set everything up from new, uh, up new today. Where is my song? Where is my song? Where's my song? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Where did my song go? All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'll see you later.